Today on r and on Sports, Larry and Howard react to Aaron Rodgers' season-ending injury, Deion Sanders' impact, and Team USA's struggle. Then we hear a throwback interview with Daryl Dr. Duncan Stein Griffith. All of this and more on this week's episode of r and on Sports. Now, here are your hosts, Larry Robinson and Howard Robertson. Hello and welcome to r and R on Sports. I'm Howard Robertson. And I am the great one, the amazing one, oh, the fantastic God. one, the most spendiferous one, Larry Robinson! <laughs> oh, listen to the applause. <laughs> Listen to the What's crowd. up, brother? How you it's doing, deafening. man? I can't hear myself. I know you can't. I know. I know. Y'all be calm down. Yeah. Calm down, please, everybody. Calm please, down. Please. Calm down. It's all good. What's it's going all on, good. man? They, I'm they, coming back. I'm they, coming back. They calming down. They, they going. <laughs> they going down like Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> oh man, that's man. Listen, they said that Aaron Rodgers has been on his best behavior. He is the most amazing leader. He's been engaged with his team, everything, and and man, he went down in four plays. Mm-hmm. Damn, right on down. I mean, like, I mean, like, get down, da- get down, <laughs> get down. <laughs> but now, man, I mean, you know, I feel for the brother, man. I really do. I feel. What you think about um, Patrick Mahomes shooting the text saying, "I mm-hmm. hate that dude." <laughs> Patrick Mahomes is like, I hate that man. I'm like, man, Aaron Rodgers got to be one of the most hated quarterbacks in the NFL. Well, uh, I, well, I mean, anytime you put all your, you put your eggs in that basket, and the biggest one gets Cracked. broken, <laughs> broken, <laughs> and you can't use it anymore. What do you do? Do you get rid of the shells? Do you just sit it over there on the side? Hoping that it grows back together. What do you do, Humpty Dumpty? That and 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 what they did was they went on with life. Yeah, they and they won the game. They won the game. But Zach Wilson, if people people seem to have a short memory, mm-hmm. Zach Wilson is actually supposed to be the man, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but he just performed so horribly last year. They said, "Look, we're going to go out and get this relic, and <laughs> and actually get him." To play, but I mean, Aaron Rodgers is an old, I think, eighteen years in the league. However, still playing at a at a high level. But I think but what man, they did in addition to was I think they got uh, great young talent, phenomenal in key positions. Very. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna show up. And these young cats are are, are here to play. They don't know what they're not supposed to be able to do. Well, also, uh, also, they got the fact that Aaron Rodgers did spend the whole training camp and, and pre with him. OTRs and everything else. Um, I mean, literally, he he was able to really groom these guys Do into the champion in the championship way. He dispensed I mean, some wisdom. He groomed think, them out. I you think, think so? Did? I think so. I think okay. so because of the fact that this guy had to perform this year. He had to play at a high level, or else. His push for getting out of Green Bay um, was all for naught. Yeah, and so yeah. I think he really put his best foot forward, and literally at this point, it's over. And then I say, yeah, I think it's over too. It's over for him. I, I don't I see think him. It's over I don't too. see him coming back. I agree. Back. I don't see him coming back. That's I agree. A, that's a rough injury at 38, 39 years old. That is old. exactly right. And and literally, they had a great report on the Today Show about. Um, what actually is happening yeah. and yeah. the fact that there's low blood flow to the right. Achilles area right. anyway. Right. Right. And being at that age of, in football years, it's probably it's, not going to yeah. happen. Yeah. And I mean, literally, you'd have to – the training uh, – the, the um, rehab from an Achilles situation, I heard it's brutal. It's grueling. I it's heard grueling. it's brutal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just can't see. And, and I then, can't see him. And then the, here's the question. Here's the question. Three letters. W H Y. Why? Why put yourself through all of that? You got all the money. You. you Wait a minute. He got. He that got money's like, guaranteed. He got like nine million per down. 
He got like nine plus million dollars per down. I mean, that is a phenomenal return regardless, on your investment. Regardless. For Aaron. Aaron's investment, yeah. not the Jets. <laughs> not Woody Johnson. My goodness, my goodness. Got so much more to talk about only here on r and on Sports. We will be right back after this. Humans being with Kirk Whalen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome... Now I'm going to say my friend, Jonathan Capehart. You came up and tapped me on my shoulder <laughs> and you said, I'm a big fan. My name is Kirk Whalem. And I just about jumped out of my skin because I was like, wait, Kirk Whalem is saying hi to me? He's a fan of mine? Get out of here. <laughs> Humans being with Kirk Whalem. It's okay. Welcome back to a little r and on Sports. And this is Larry's Lament. And this is my lament going out to them crazy ass referees. Joey, Sal, Dick, Tony, and Danny. The age of the celebrity official has gone way, way, way too far. I shouldn't know your name. I should know your name unless you're a friend of my dad, my girlfriend's crazy uncle, my older cousins twice removed, or somebody, or maybe just my older sister's boyfriend's older cousin. Why? Because you a caller, not a baller. As I said, you a caller, not a baller. We as fans are tired as hell because we don't like you having an impact on the outcomes of our games. You should be as innocuous as the free throw line, the out of bounds line. You should be a part of the game, but you shouldn't have an impact on it. Why? Because you a caller, not a baller. Once again, in case you didn't hear me, you a caller, not a baller. Listen, no one expects y'all to do a damn thing because that's just the way it is. If you want to call five fouls on LeBron James and make him not be able to play a game, then that's okay. But listen, what you're doing to us is you're taking away the thrill of victory. You're removing my agony of defeat and you making me mad as hell. So listen, I got one thing to say to you. I got one thing, one thing to say to you. Stop it, because Trick, you killing my damn vibe. Hello, everybody. This is Tim Brown, 2015 NFL Hall of Fame inductee, and you are listening to R&R on Sports. Community is more than where you live. It's the people in it who go above and beyond to help it thrive. During the 50th anniversary of hip hop and the 75th anniversary of black radio and year round, AARP recognizes people, members, volunteers, and partners giving back to our communities. We believe when our efforts drive change for the greater good, we all thrive together. To learn more about how AARP supports efforts to keep our communities thriving, visit aarp.org slash black community. That's aarp.org slash black community. Welcome back. Back. Uh, so let me say this. Let me say this. Got? Last weekend um, was very, very gratifying to me, and it was the most sports field uh, gratification. Why was that? Because I just loved seeing. First of all, I loved seeing all of the black players that made it to the quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals of the U.S. Open. Okay. okay. You're talking about TFO? I'm, I'm talking about TFO. Nelson. I'm talking about uh, uh, Maddie. And I'm talking about, wasn't that Stevenson? Is it? I Stevenson. thought it was Nelson. Is it Nelson or is it Stevenson? 
Uh, his name is Nelson, I don't think. Uh, what's but his anyway, name? But the young, but yeah, the brother to yeah, beat, uh, 150 beat mile an hour, sir. Oh no, he was balling. He was uh, balling, young guy. But I am, uh, so I was, I was gratified with that. The other thing I was gratified about, obviously, was Coach Prime. Prime. <laughs> And man, this is the he's Shakur the hottest thing in sports. Shadour, 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 and uh, Travis Hunter. Travis Hunter is so amazing. Travis Hunter plays both sides. He's always on. He's the Dion. Field. He is Dion. He's Dion. He is Dion. You know, I think we forget how amazing Dion Sanders really was during his heyday. Mm. I mean, this is a cat that, that played in the NFL game. Flew to the World Series, mm-hmm. and he batted over 500 during the World Series. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was all state in basketball coming out of high school. Mm-hmm. Average mm-hmm. 24 points. In fact, mm-hmm. the name Primetime came from, from him basketball. basketball. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you're talking about he's got to be one of the greatest athletes in our history. Shelton. Shelton, yeah, Shelton yeah. is his name. Thank yeah. you, our crackpot staff. And then so, what I said? Did I say Shelton? You might have. Yeah, you it said was close. You it, said Maddie. It wasn't Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you said. Well, okay. Well, you Shelton. Tennis. Ben Shelton. Yeah, yeah and I love the attitude. Oh, he love had that attitude. Oh man, he man, was cocky. He, had, he got he swag. Now. He got he swag. Did. You right. You um, right. So I, I am. Um, that really, really made me feel good because um, why? You, you because I, I don't underestimate my people. Do n- never underestimate um, how great our greatness and how phenomenal we can be, especially when you don't expect us to be. And 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 I think that was the case both for Coco as well as I know Coach Prime. Nobody in a zillion and nine years expected him to first of all show up like he did in the first uh, like they did in the, in the first, first game. game. In the first game they were like, okay, it's one game, but this is a fluke. Uh, but yeah, but they they were playing somebody who played for the national championship. Right. Okay. Right. And uh if this had been Colorado of last year they wouldn't have been in the stadium, right? They wouldn't. Have, they could have been, stayed in been the 45 stadium. Forty-five nothing. Oh man! It'd have been Dallas. Dallas against uh, with either uh, Dallas you know, against TCU the Giants or uh, <laughs> or Nebraska, and they told Nebraska up. So I I love it. Um, I love that he's brought the coaches with him. I love that he's got what sixty-three, some some amazing number of new players that came yeah. there specifically to play for him. You know, that's the, that's the part that I think scares um, the, all of college football is the fact that he's telling them, don't let me get comfortable. Mm-hmm. Because I think kids are looking around the country. Now, if you're a DB, where else would you want to play? Yeah, Where yeah. else would you want to play yeah. before the greatest – Defensive back in the history of the NFL. And not just the DB. I mean, I mean, but but I mean, I'm just saying that the culture that they're instilling yeah. in Colorado is the culture of prime, and literally, it's about be all you can be. It's about you know doing things the right way. And being he's raising he's raising all boats. Um, there, just like he did at Jackson, in, State. At Jackson State with HBCUs. I had somebody ask me, and they said, "Well, I, you know, only problem I got with him is that you know he he uh, nobody else has a chance at quarterback because the court because the QB is his son. Okay. Well, his son, well, his son looked pretty damn good. Okay, <laughs> his son. I mean, five ten. Absolutely, the first, the first absolutely. Week. No interceptions, four TDs. Uh huh. Then the second week, he has over three hundred and ninety something yards and no, no interceptions. interceptions and two TDs. I'm like, the kid is legit. Yeah, I, but I don't what, know what people what people aren't realizing is this kid has been 
trained by Peyton Manning, and he's being trained by Tom Brady. So this kid is getting the best training Absolutely. and tutelage. Exposure. Exposure um, is a great word. But, I mean, I'm looking at this kid. He has the goods, man. Mm -hmm. We're definitely going to mm -hmm. see Shador, San mm -hmm. Shador Sanders on Sundays mm -hmm. and Mondays mm -hmm. come next year. That's Without exactly a doubt. Right. That's you know, exactly right. You know, and you, we, you, can look at it, you can look at it from a standpoint of, of the fact that, that this kid is playing at such a high level. Um, I just hope he can keep it up. So it was a feel good weekend for me. Okay, um, okay, so, but you didn't feel good about uh, uh, the uh, USA team, did you? Eh, the basketball team eh, It didn't really matter to me. Why you say it that? Man, you really can't be selective, me. man. Now really one minute, one me. minute you talking about I'm feeling good, and then the next uh, minute you talking about I, oh, it didn't matter yeah. to me. No, so it didn't wait a minute, to me. wait a minute. When we get when bring, we when you had bring me your down. hometown team. You had one of the players on it as from your hometown team. Yeah. J Triple J. That's true. And who stunk up the play. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Him and Brandon Ingram, man, they I mean, definitely didn't represent. Thrown together teams and whatnot. To, I mean, ah. It was yeah. thrown together. I know. It was. They were like, man, we, we just taking all comers. They even had Come Bobby on, you want to play? Want to play? Want to play? <laughs> you know, it's... <laughs> Glorified so, pickup. So, so I. Uh, so yeah. now, what do you think? Where does the USA basketball team go from here? Well, they get better. They get newer. They uh, next time. I mean, you know, you, we're looking at the Olympics. You'll see a different team, obviously. Well, LeBron, uh, Stephen Curry, are they, Kevin are they Durant, playing? all of them. They're already talking about. All right, it. All right. They're already talking about it. All so right. Paris is going to be lit. Yeah, Paris yeah. is going to be lit. Yeah. But I think. If they're able to finagle getting Joel Embiid to play for the U.S. as opposed to France, man, this might be. I'm trying to get to Paris. This might be I'm the trying redeem, to get to Paris. This might be the Olympics. redeem team too. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. mean, it's yeah. gonna be fun, man. It, it could literally be one of the most exciting Olympic teams, if not the most exciting. You gonna Olympic go? Team. We can go and do riffing from. Uh, Let's do uh, it. Do riffing. Let's from from R &R uh, yeah, you gotta do R and R. <laughs> but we can do riffing. We can do riffing too. Can, you can yeah, get a couple yeah, jazz, great jazz bars. clubs. Yeah, and, and, for and, sure, uh, for sure. But no, I, I think we seriously ought to look at uh, us being in Paris. Because I think it'll be really I got cool. Somebody and really working different. on it right now. Okay, well let's make it happen. Oh, let's well. make it happen. Listen, y'all, so, y'all heard it here first. R and R on in Paris for the Olympics. Will it? So will it? Will it? Oh yeah, speak it. Speak, speak those it. things as if they were. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we was at the Super Bowl a few years ago. Right. We can That's do this. Right. We can go to Paris. That's right. We oui, we oui, Monsieur. We we. Parlez-vous français? Oh, did you take about 20 minutes of French? <laughs> <laughs> je t'aime, je okay. t'aime. Okay, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> They're going to like me over Voulez-vous coucher <laughs> avec <laughs> moi <laughs> ce soir? <laughs> <laughs> now I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we'll be right back. Creole lady mama lied. <laughs> Hey, this is Dr. J, and you're listening to a little R&R &R on sports. Now you can get me to sing. I love this song. <laughs> Cheating in the next room. <laughs> Cheating in the next room. Did you hear the begging in that? In, that, in those lyrics? No, I heard that guitar coming in. That yes. thing was crunk. Blues in the basement on the Kazookian Network. Kazookian. Hello and welcome back to On Our Own Sports. And of course, you know, we call this segment Eye Conversation. Icons, and baby. Icons, icons. And today, the icon. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 bro. You don't see, see, listen, 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 listen. Why are you interrupting? For a Louisville That's champion, so rude. for That's a Louisville so champion, rude. only Louisville get to announce a Louisville champion, introduce a Louisville champion. So listen, man, nobody from Memphis will ever get an opportunity to introduce this brother. Listen, y'all, oh, this is Lord, NCAA that. champion, Final Four most outstanding player, Wooden Award winner, consensus first team All-American. Listen, man, he is also my hero. Second pick in the draft. Rookie of the year in the NBA in 1981. 
retired jersey from Louisville and Utah. We talking about none other than the who, king of who, Louisville. Who, king who, of the West Damn, Dr. Duncan Stein Griffin. What's up, What's fellas? up, my brother? How y'all doing? Man, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful, man. Doing good, man. This is an honor, man. You know, this is, I'm trying to contain myself. Okay. You know, this brother literally is the reason why I love hoop so much. Because, mm -hmm. see, you got to understand, Louisville, University of Louisville, was you was the city of Louisville's pro team. Seriously. So we treated them like pros. So this dude was the man. He was the, he was like, after Ali, it's Daryl Griffin. Is that right? He's so number two. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Am, am I lying, Daryl? Hey, am I lying? I, I, I'm just here. <laughs> he wants you to co-sign that. <laughs> he wants you to everybody, co-sign Everybody, that. everybody in, the, in the league will. Everybody in Louisville will. They'll I definitely get it. it. They'll definitely get it. Well, welcome to our, our own sports, Dr. Duncan Stein. Good to see you, man. Good right, to good have you. you guys, man. Happy to be here. I'm telling you. I'm so, telling you. So, man, you got to tell us the journey. M Mayo High School. University of Louisville, Utah Jazz. Kind of give us some color in between. How you end up from at Mail to Louisville, then all the way out there in uh, Mormon. Louisville. And I got to tell everybody that's not familiar. When they say Mail, it's M A L E, not Mail High School, not M A I L. <laughs> Mail, Mail, traditional high, high school. school. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I would have to back it up. Uh, to my elementary school. When I went to school, uh, the years I went to school, uh, elementary school was grades one through six. Okay. And uh, junior high was seven, eight, nine. Mm -hmm. High school was 10, 11, and 12. Mm -hmm. okay. So I went to uh, uh, elementary school, which is about four blocks from uh, where I grew up at called Virginia Avenue Elementary, which they changed to Jesse R. Carter my fifth grade year. Uh, I left there and I went to Duval Junior High School. And the Bowling okay. High School was, uh, was the, the dominant uh, junior high school in the city. Uh, the team that I played on supported all the city high schools with talent. Absolutely. We went to Mail or Central. We right. went to Shawnee. Uh, but all the talent came from the Junior High School. We used to have a junior high school league at Mail High School on Saturday mornings while all the, all the city junior high schools would play. Mm -hmm. And uh, during my time, uh, high school coaches could recruit, so they would come to the uh, to the junior high school league at Merrill High School and, and and check us out and try to get us to go to their high schools because there wasn't any districting. You can go anywhere you wanted to go. Uh, so oh, wow. it was interesting being recruited in junior high school. Uh, so the junior high school team I was on was pretty stacked. You know, we had guys by the name of Daryl Yarbrough from the North Crew, Tojo, Bobby Turner, and uh, we all, me and Bobby. And Tyrone Cunningham went to Mayo. Daryl Yalbro and uh, Fanor Crook and a guy by the name of Henry Lee Myers, uh, they all went to, to Central. Now, we all end up winning state tournaments, and we end up playing against each other in the state uh, cha a championship game at my, uh, my sophomore year. Uh-huh. And, uh -huh. and, 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 and let it be known that we couldn't dump. Don't just stand there. I come into my freshman year in college. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. At that time, could y'all dunk in warm-ups? Yeah, before the refs came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we, we, yeah we, but we, if the refs saw you, and a lot of people find this hard to believe because that's the way it was when I was coming through. Uh -huh. We couldn't dunk? No. Nope. What, uh, what are you talking dunk, about? Bro, man, you don't on, know man. nothing about on, me. Bro. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> if you, to your point about before the refs came out, if they saw you, the first, the first year, my sophomore year, you could dunk in warm-ups and no, nothing was said. My uh, junior year, however, if you dunked in warm-ups and the refs saw you, they would literally start the game off with a tech. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was That's how they do it. So yeah. What we ended up doing, we just stuck, uh, sent our trainer to the, to, the, uh, to the door where the refs would come. Let you know. <laughs> and then we, and then he seen the refs come, he waved the flag. <laughs> <laughs> no more dunk. Let me ask you now. This is the brother who actually um, made famous the 360 dunk in a game. So, when was the first time you did a 360 dunk in well, a basketball game? Let's let's back it up. Uh, when I went to high, when I went to uh, University of Louisville in '77, uh huh, uh, they just reintroduced the dunk. Okay. So 
that was an opportunity for me. I, my eyes just lit up because you could dunk them again. <laughs> we, were, we were never able to do that. Right. Uh, so uh, we uh, that team from 77 to, uh, to uh, uh, 80, uh, the year I graduated, uh, we, were, we were called the Doctors of Dunk. Now, right. people don't understand that before Five Slammer Jammer and before the Fab Five, it was right. a Doctors of Dunk. We're the team that put the dunk on the map. Mm -hmm. We became okay. the team that everybody gravitated to because we had a lot of high flyers on our team. Real quickly, real quickly, for the youngsters that are listening, okay, tell them, explain to them why we couldn't dunk. You couldn't dunk because Lou Alcindor. There you go. There yeah, you Lou go. Alcindor, he was seven foot two, and uh, they took the dunk out for nine or ten years because he was just dominating. And then Man. the NCAA uh, took out uh, – Took the uh, made a ruling where the dunk was illegal, and they put it back in. Unfortunately, of my my uh, freshman year in college. As we sit here many years later, ain't that something? <laughs> ain't that the craziest thing you? Would, nobody would imagine that anybody would do that. Change the, but that's how they've been doing folk who look like us all the time. Change the rules, literally. Actually, actually, we uh, uh there's a uh, a producer in California. We're working on. We were working on a documentary before the corner, uh, the COVID uh, that right? came. Uh -huh. we were working on a documentary called uh, "Doctor Dunkenstein and the Doctors of Dunk," and uh, when, then we're gonna talk about that. What we're talking about now: how the dunk was taken out of the game of basketball, how right. we reinstated, and uh, how we uh, we changed the game because uh, we became a road show. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, be known to us as mm -hmm. players, we just mm -hmm. want to play and dunk the basketball in the game. But we had a lot of high flyers on our team. And they're gonna do a documentary on that called Doctor Duncan Stein and Doctor Dunk. So uh, we'll probably resume the uh, filming and stuff uh, uh, once this virus dies down. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. listen, this is this is Iron Iron Sports, and we're speaking with Doctor Duncan Stein himself, <laughs> Daryl Griffith. Uh, Daryl, listen, you were highly recruited out of high school. I mean, seriously recruited. If yeah, not, I was going to high school play the nation when I came out. Yeah. If not Louisville, where? Where was the place that was the number two place? Well, I had pro, I had a, a, a pro contract offer straight out of high school. Yeah, and that was with Kentucky I, Colonels, I, I, right? Uh, there was a Colonels. I can't think of the uh, NBA team, but my dad wasn't having it. Oh, really? Oh, really? <laughs> he wasn't having it. He was going to school. Uh, so uh, it came down to Louisville and Michigan. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. So I was uh, probably uh, the night I decided I was – up and I went in the kitchen and my dad happened to be up and I said dad why are you up I want to let you know I made my decision he said where are you going son I said I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay home and go to the University of Louisville he looked at me and said I knew that and walked away and went on back to bed <laughs> <laughs> I knew that all the time, yeah, now, all the time. Now, now something that was always rumored was that there was a package deal there was you coach Wade Houston and Bobby Turner was that a, was that a pack? Can you can you can you shed any light on that? Well, we, the we, we, we started out at, at, at Virginia Avenue Elementary School and went to Duval Junior High School and then we went to Mel High School. So we we were planning on going to the same college together. But okay. what ended up happening is is uh, the University of Louisville ended up signing Coach Houston as an assistant coach before we even signed. Oh, really? Coach Houston was the first, okay. Houston was the first African American basketball player for the University of Louisville basketball team. Right, right, yeah. right. And uh, so they ended up signing him uh, as assist as assistant coach, and uh, so it was just me and Bobby left. And I made my uh, Bobby made his decision before I did, and Bobby signed with Oklahoma State with Steve really? Smith. Steve Smith and Shawnee uh, was assistant coach to a uh, Honeybee. Uh, went to Oklahoma State and coached. And he had already had uh, Daryl Yarbrough and uh, Wayne Gold and Ronnie Daniels down there. Wow. So Bobby, Bobby signed with them, but the rule states that you're, you're signing a, a, a letter of intent is not valid until your parents sign. Oh. So I called Bobby up and said, man, what's the deal? He said, man, I, I don't know. He said, I, I don't know if I really want to make his decision or not. So the University of Louisville found out that Bobby's daddy hadn't signed the letter of intent. Oklahoma State knew that his dad hadn't signed the letter of intent. They didn't know where Bob's dad was at. So Mr. Turner ended up, uh, he was out of town, he ended up servicing and uh, 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 signed the letter of intent for Bobby to go to the University of Louisville. 
Wow, wow, wow. wow. So, wow. Dr. Duncan Stein Griffith, uh, we're so glad to have you, man. We're going to be back for more on the other side. I mean, we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it, man. We're going to get into it. Okay, okay, okay. The okay. dunk contest. Okay, okay. okay. Man, listen, don't be okay. stopping me when you talk about Louisville, man. It's Louisville. We the city of champions, okay. bro. Don't yeah, be hating, man. got to try to control. This boy has lost <laughs> his mind. <laughs> Having you here, he has lost his mind. But we'll be back for more r and our own sports right after this. Kudzukian. The company is based in Memphis, but it is international. A new building, an expanded team, new equipment, a new studio, all inside of seven years. The resources that we were able to utilize with Kazukian and their team has been incredible. And our partners at Kazukian has been a large part of our success. One, it's black owned. So we get to tell our own stories in our own way. With social media and the technology we have today, the world is listening. Kazukian. Check out all your Kazukian favorites now. Download the Kazukian app, available on Android and iOS. Kazukian. Back for more on our own sports. Listen, man, I know you're not going to try oh, to introduce his brother. See, man, Again, I'm telling you, I man. I told you the time was out for that. You did that. Okay, that was a nice little bit, man. You did that. So can we get back to All right, man, go ahead. Quit being Let's a... See. I mean... Man, see, you just irritate me, man. You, you irritate you me, too. brother. Oh, listen, man, man listen. We here with Daryl Griffith, University of Louisville great, Utah Jazz great. I want to know how brother survived in Utah for 11 years, man. Well... Uh, when I first went out to Utah, my first season was the worst year I had in professional sports. In wow. sports, period. Because I go from winning the national championship to 17,000 sellout crowds to going to Utah, and we're the worst team in the league. Worst team in the league. Oh, wow. Yeah, terrible. terrible team. Yeah, not, not only that, culturally it was different because there were only 1,200 blacks in the whole state of Utah. How many? Twelve hundred in the whole state. Oh, goodness. And most of most of them were in Salt Lake City at, at Hill Air Force Base, and then the uh, the, uh, the other portion of it was in Ogden, Utah. They had another military base there. So socially, how did that play out? I mean, obviously, after a while, that I mean they knew you were you, and so I'm I'm sure you got treated with great respect. How was it initially? Well, initially for me, you know, I, I always tell the story that. Uh, I stayed in the hotel downtown until my condo was ready. Mm -hmm. And the hotel was called the Hilton Hotel, which is uh, right out the expressway. You you get out the uh, uh, the I-15 and it'll take you right into town. Uh, So after practice and stuff, practicing with the fellas, I would go back to the hotel. And they had a a Chevron station there. I had a convenience store in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I uh, walked over to the convenience store, and I see this brother and his Cadillac pull up. Mm-hmm. Like, I can go up to him, man, and find out what's going on because the only black <laughs> is, is, is that is that practice. So uh, uh, while he's putting gas in his car, I go up to him and say, hey, man, how you doing? You know, my name is Daryl. I'm in town. Uh, I don't see too many of us, man. I want to get some advice on, on what to do and, and, and where to go at while, while I'm in town. He mm-hmm. said, bro, sorry about your luck. He said, I'm from California. I just got out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting the hell out of here. And you know, they treated me well. You know, it was just rough for me coming from a, a, an environment that, you know, in Louisville, it's got a big African American culture. Uh, they had one black barber named Billy, uh, and no no radio station, when, no black culture there at all. No. Right. right. Wow. You know, wow. So, Wow. And you spent a whole 11 years there, man. It was a difficult transition. You know, so, as, as each year went on, uh, it, it got, got better, better, right? You know, but you just had to, you know, I, I came out there to do work, man, and that's what I did. You know, when the season was over, I flew back, back to Louisville. This is Iron Island Sports, and we're speaking with uh, University of Louisville and Utah Jazz great Daryl Griffith. So talk a little bit about, talk a little bit about the transition, how you came, how you guys – kind of came from worst to first. Um, well, I was, and, uh, I was and your drafted. teammates and your coach, talk about that. Okay, I was drafted uh, by the Jazz, first round, second pick. Uh, they had already had Adrian Dantley there. Mm-hmm. And they needed somebody to compliment him because AD was a beast. You know, yeah. he, he gave you 30 yeah. every night. Right. Uh, so uh, the way the draft went was I was represented by the guy by the name of Bob Wolf. Bob Wolf was – 
the, mm -hmm. the, the, the agent at the, of his time. Uh, everybody un, uh, like David Falk and him, they always reference Mr. Wolf because he kind mm -hmm. of set the stage. Right. Uh, so his clients uh, doing when I played was Joe Burry Curl. He was the number one pick, and myself. Uh, he had a, a, a lot of other clients: Otis Bird, Song, Larry Bird. Mm -hmm. but anyway, uh, initially the way that uh, the draft was supposed to go down, Mr. Wolf at, at one time he had represented uh, damn near all the Celtics, and him and Red Allback were real good friends. Uh, uh -huh. his, his office was in Boston. And uh, Mr. Whip called me up. He said, hey, it's a good chance you can go to Boston. I said, what do you mean? He said, uh, uh, Boston's got the third pick, but they're going to try to make a trade. He said, Red needs a big man and a shooting guard. So what Boston did was uh, Golden State had the number one pick. Now, Boston had a number one pick, and they traded – the number one pick for Robert Parrish. Mm -hmm. mm. That, that means that, that now Golden State's got the number one pick, and Boston's got the number three pick and the big man he needs. Right. Robert Parrish. So the second pick was Utah, and they was figuring Utah was going to take Kevin McHale, and then the third pick would have been me, and they and Red would have had his, his objective. Mm -hmm. He got the big, big man and the shooting guard. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, three championship NBA championships later, uh, Boston takes uh, – uh, I mean, Utah takes uh, me and Boston yeah. takes uh, Larry, uh, yeah. Larry McHale. McHale, yeah. Oh, wow. 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 That's great. That's crazy that stories, is. man. Yes. The backstory, the backstory. Yeah. So, when um, you made famous the dunk, the 360, uh, at Louisville. College. So, once again, when, when was the first time you did the dunk? And then, secondly, what was it like pulling it off in the game? Well, I was the first one to do it in college basketball, period. And I've, I've, I've been doing it in, in high school, you know, doing different dunk contests. But in live game action, I was the first one to do it in, in game. Uh, wow. that, was, that was one of my, my repertoire as being Dr. Duncanstein. Uh, wow. I can't recall what game it was, uh, Larry, but I, I, I just, you know, anytime you, we were on the break by ourselves, it was showtime. So you, <laughs> you just did what you had to do. And, right. Uh, so it just came to me, you know, one game, like the opportunity presented itself, and now it's three sixty in the game, and uh, you know that kind of added to the uh, amazement of our team and why we were always uh, in any city that we went to. When, when we got in town, it was Doctors Dunks in town, you know, Dr. whether it be no. Memphis, whether it be St. Louis, because we had that that stigma about us, uh, which was fun for us, uh, but it, it was uh, it was something that uh, we 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 enjoy living up to. Tell them tell them how tall you are. I'm 6'4". Six 6'4". Four. Six four. Okay. So talk about what it was like, that dunk contest uh, from 84, I believe, that they're still talking about. Now, for the fans, <laughs> so you understand the, 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 the magnitude of this dunk contest. Well, the dunk, uh, that, that was the first dunk contest. First one. The first one was in 84, and that was in Denver, Colorado. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. In the dunk contest, the first NBA dunk contest right. in 1984 was Larry Nance Sr., Michael Cooper, Clyde Drexler, a cat named Julius Irving, I believe that's his last name, uh, <laughs> Edgar Jones, Ralph Sampson, Dominique Wil Wilkins, and Orlando Wooldridge. That's crazy. Yep. That is absolutely that, crazy. And, oh, 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 excuse me. And Dr. Duncan Stein, Darren yeah, Griffith. Yeah, Darren. So, did you do the 360 in the in the contest? Uh, no, I was saving that for the latter rounds, which I didn't 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 make. Uh, <laughs> but, oh, you come with your strongest stuff first. No, no, I had some other ones that I figured could give me points, and then they, you know, when the latter round, that's when you bring everything else out. But what right. happened was, you know, people don't realize how high Larry Nance can jump, and he's six eleven. Right, he was he was crazy, man. His dunk okay. for him and I think it was him and Doc in the finals. Oh, but yeah. Here's what the young people don't understand: back in the day in a dunk contest, oh, we wasn't throwing the ball in the air and bouncing everywhere. It was ball in hand. Uh -huh. Right, everything uh -huh. was ball in hand and creative with the, with the ball in hand. Right. We didn't bounce the ball. We didn't throw it up in the air and let it bounce. We didn't jump over no cars. You know, we had to have the ball in hand. <laughs> Well, listen, Dale, you also were, were made, was um, a big portion of people talked about the fact that you couldn't palm the ball right. in college. Now, listen, bro, 
I saw you at the dunk contest. There were several times you bounced the ball and palmed it. So you stopped it. Did your hands grow once you went to the pros, man? It's called stick them. <laughs> no. Stick no. Up <laughs> Seriously. Listen, when you were warming up for the ducks, that's man, what, that's what the, I, I was using in the game. But in the dunk contest, it was all cool to use. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Stick them and you put on your hand, help you grip the ball when it was when it was uh uh, slicker and wet, and that that helped us uh, help me grip the ball at the time. But I could never pump the ball. Oh, now, were you? Oh, wait a minute. As I look at these cats, were you the shortest guy in the contest? Yeah. Yeah, but he also had a forty-eight. Oh yeah, he had a forty-eight inch vertical. But though. these cats could fly. Yeah, they could true. literally fly and soar. That's Clyde. True. Clyde Drexler, man, Doctor J. Doctor J. Oh my. God. And Larry Nance won it. So you know, yeah, that man's one looking in the ring, man. He 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 was he was doing some crazy stuff, man. Yeah. Well, listen, man. Let's for, fast forward to the day. Where do you think you would play coming out of college with positionless basketball? You got, you know, I want I, no, I want to ask you what you think about positionless basketball. Well, well, it, it, it basically is 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 professional sandlot. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> It's going on. I like that. I like that. <laughs> it's professional sandlot. That's how everybody plays in the playground. You go on the playground, everybody's playing that way, playing that. Right, right. You know, they, uh, it's so much supreme shooters. The game is so much exciting. You got so many people that can shoot the basketball. The big men are so versatile now. Uh, with K, uh, with KD be able to shoot the basketball. I mean, you know, if you're a big man now, you got to be able to shoot the basketball. Yeah, you know, man. And you got to be able to defend. And what it does is, is that. When you take a big man from the basket, he could be seven one with a wingspan. But you take him away from the basket, and he's six six, six five. Right. Because, you know, because you gotta you gotta give up some because the guys can go around you. Right. And and we right. uh, that was a term that was always used in professional basketball. It was called draw and kick. You know, penetrate, right. draw the man, come through, you kick it. So right. when I broke, I mean, let me give you a scenario about three pointer. In eighty, when I first got to the Jazz. My first two seasons, I shot maybe 30, 40 three pointers. And my coach, Frank Layton, told me in the 84 season, he said, You got range. He said, We're going to utilize that line. That line is out there for something. So right. I broke the NBA three point record in 84 when I made 90 for a season. Mm, then wow. I broke it again in 85, uh, making 91. Okay, it's and it's not point. That's three, <laughs> right? <laughs> they may so so the three point has just increased and increased and increased. So now that you got the three point line out there, and you'll stretch the defense out, and the philosophy is that everybody shoots the ball from the threes, then you got to defend out on the floor. So the big man's got to go away from the basket and defend. So that's mm -hmm. why it's so much more exciting, man. Everybody's getting to the hole because you really don't have that one rim protector unless you got a guy that is is stable in the block. That's why you want big mans like uh, Anthony Davis and, and uh, mm -hmm. right. that, that can spread mm -hmm. the floor. Mm -hmm. Right. You look at the great, mm -hmm. He's taking it coast to coast. He's right. You know, AD can shoot three pointers. That's why the, you see. That's why it's so valuable to have a big man that can shoot now. Absolutely, wow. absolutely. So 11, Eleven years in the uh, in the league for you. What's your life like now? Tell everybody um, what uh, Daryl Griffith's life is like now. And well, uh, not right now. I mean, I mean everybody got the same everybody life. Everybody got the problem. You know, <laughs> be at the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, well I, I can tell you as a former player playing back in that era that uh, we sitting back, all the former players sitting back shaking their head and this wondering, like, man, man, if I was playing now, you know, what would my contract look like? Because these mm -hmm. guys' contract is sick, man. I mean, mm -hmm. you should be an eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh man on the bench and making $12 million a year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, you know, right. And right. it was unheard of back when we played. What um, was your largest contract? My largest contract was my last year. I made a meal a year, my last two years. Okay. You okay. Know. But uh, you know, and that was big money. That, yeah, That's huge yeah. money. But if you would, if you would look at my stats compared to the guy's stats now, I'd have been a max player. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So we, we we tease each other about that. Some of my teammates will call each other when, you know, doing this free agency and see all these guys signing for these big numbers, and we'd be like, wow. <laughs> Wow. Got to put ourselves in that in that scenario, but it's all good, man. You know, all right, I got my I got my last patented question, Daryl. Here it comes. You know, listen, you coming you coming to you coming to the Yum Center? They about to put the big statue. They unveiling the statue of you. Every superhero has to have theme music. What's the song they playing as you walking up? <laughs> what's that? What's that song they playing? What's 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 that cut that that makes you feel like a hero? Oh, man, that's a good question. I had to think about that, Larry. Let me see, man. It had to be a back-in-the-day cut, uh, one of my favorite ones. I mean, I, I would have to go with my spinoff, man, one of George Clinton's songs. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, Dr. Duncanstein comes from Dr. Dr. Funkenstein. Exactly. He inspired, he inspired the name. Absolutely, man. Well, so thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you for taking this time but no wait a minute hold on howard has something to say that he he normally says go ahead man go ahead say oh 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 yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. oh that yeah you okay know, yeah. like you normally ask that dumb question you just asked yeah. okay, okay so i'll go, do go mine ahead, go ahead okay, so, yeah, look, <laughs> um being on r and r is kind of like joining the mob so <laughs> whenever the phone rings in the future you pick it up and you have a one word answer yes when we ask, <laughs> ask you to be back on the show I'll be right. happy. I'll be happy. I got that lot now, you know. <laughs> you, know you, you come hey, you come up robocall, you get no answer. <laughs> well, there listen, you go. man. There Thanks, you go. Dale. Go ahead, man. Finish it up. No, 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 no. We're done. We are, I appreciate you being here, man. It's fantastic being here uh, with you being here and, and just teaching, man. And, and and people have to be, especially younger people, uh, we love the opportunity to Absolutely. expose them to, uh, to you know, real real players. The greats, man. The greats. <laughs> real greats. It so, was real uh, difficult for me not to just fan straight out, man, because I'm serious. You did. Well, I mean, what, what you call what you did? I'm, I'm trying to maintain myself, man. This is like a moment <laughs> with my hero, man. All right, all right, <laughs> all right. Appreciate you being with us, man, and we'll be back for more. R&R okay. and all right, everybody, take care, bro. All, all right, right now. Take care, Dale. Right. Back for more Bye. right after this. Hey, this is Howard Robertson with r r on Sports. And I'm the most amazing Larry Robinson. For the best entertainment you can imagine, download the Kazookian app and get r r on Sports. Download it from the Google Play Store or the App Store. Android, Google Play, iOS, App Store. Get it. Kazookian. You're listening to a little r and r r and r r on Sports. Welcome back for more as we head to the door. Peace. All right, now on sports. So, um, what's happening? Well, we always shout out people and good things that are happening. And without being so self serving, <laughs> while being self serving, <laughs> is that what I said? Uh, yeah, no, yeah. I'm uh-huh. saying without being. Without being. Um, I saw a uh, fantastic act. Of sportsmanship yesterday. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, this is a high school player, soccer player, uh, in Memphis, Tennessee, and she scored three goals. Okay. And that was, I mean, long goals too. One was about thirty-five yards away. Really? Yes. And but then what she did. So was, so we're talking about a high school player. We're talking about a high school player. For yes. real? Yes. Is that what we're doing now? Yeah. We it, are. Is we that are. what we're doing we now? Are. But wait a minute, let me tell you about this. Come act on, of, man. At, Come this on. Act man. Of, Come on. Uh, man. Sportsmanship. Come on, man. When one of the other players went I'm down go with, I'm a go crap, Memphis. with a crap. Come on, man. <laughs> She went over and stretched the leg out, and because her teammates were just standing around and all of that, so mm-hmm. an opposing player. Okay, so I, I thought who that we was talking fantastic. about? I, and I, that uh, name is immaterial right now. <laughs> <laughs> who we talking about? <laughs> we talking about my grandbaby. Oh Lord, listen, Addison man, man. Homer. Hines. He's a Homer. He's nepotistic. Phenomenal, I mean, just all of that. Anyway, anyway, it, I'm shouting out Coco Golf. Coco who? Coco Golf. Okay, put the F on the name. Golf. Man. Thank you. I it, mean, enunciate. the young lady, enunciate. number one, I enjoyed the fact that she was not allowing these older players 
to take advantage of the rules. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, she was just totally caught up with her family. I oh, yeah. Loved that, oh yeah, man! I oh, yeah. love oh, yeah. that young oh, yeah. family. Oh, yeah. She she called Funniest her thing. brothers. She called her brothers, Sitting and the brothers the... could the brothers couldn't the brothers couldn't answer their phone because they was running around the house. Oh, oh is that why they didn't answer? <laughs> She's she like, me. She this... called her daddy out. She said, "This is the first time I ever seen him cry," and he was standing on there going, "Don't stop!" <laughs> stop. <laughs> she said he tries to be hard, but. <laughs> Beautiful oh, family, absolutely. Beautiful, absolutely. intact, Black beautiful family. I love beautiful it. family. Love it, love it. So love listen, it. man, we gotta we gotta get on out of here. All right, all right. I'm heading out. Uh, y'all, y'all, look. Be with us next week. Keep talking about us. Keep listening to it. Things are going very, very well. We appreciate y'all. Be with us next week. I'm Howard Robertson, and I'm the great one, Larry Robertson. Take care of yourselves, each other, and it, and everybody else. R&R is hosted by Larry Robinson and Howard Robertson. R&R is directed, produced, recorded, and distributed by Kudzukian. <laughs>